think we're live now. Yep. Just go into the uh, live chat. Okay, hi all. Okay, welcome to the Q&A between myself, Charles Float, and the beautiful one and only James Gregory. Hi guys. Uh, today we're just going to be having kind of a sit down talk where we're going to be running through some questions that you guys have already prepared for us, which we've got quite a few here. And then we're also going to be going through the live chat. So any additional questions that you want to guys want to answer kind of after we've got through those first initial questions, we can go ahead and do that. So let's just jump into it. Then. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, thanks for inviting me on the chat, Charles. <laughs> okay. It's great to uh, be back live since BHC TV and everything. And hopefully, if all goes well, we can do some more, you know, the guys from Proper PBN Group. So that'll be good. So Yeah, uh, yeah, we'll do some, definitely hook up some more live Q&As for this one. Um, so just going to jump straight into questions, really. The first question we've got comes from Raymond Jacobs, and he asks, where do you get the best PBN domains from? currently on the market because it seems to be oversaturated with quite a few crappy sellers basically. So basically he's asking about expired domains. Uh, I think he's asking generally and just your general where do you get your best PBN domains from? Yeah well realistically auctions in this day and age is going to be where the best domains come from but I do think that you can still scrape for domains. Um, I'm not sure if you agree with me uh, <laughs> since the repurposing sandbox but yeah, I think scrape for them, get them from auctions, and that's really it, to be honest. Yeah, uh, I, yeah. I, well, I, I if, 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 if budget allows, go for auctions. Yeah. Otherwise, look through the marketplaces and try and find people that are actually scraping good ones. Yeah, so completely kind of agree for that as well. Um, I'd just add that I do actually get quite a few of mine from TV Solutions. If you want to check them out, you may see my beautiful face in the uh, front of their homepage. Um, next question comes from Jamie Samby, and I do apologise if I ruin any of your people's names that have actually commented this, because there's quite a few quite interesting names to kind of get out to my British mouth. Um, so Jamie Samby asks, uh, does Parasat SEO still work in 2017, and does it work to the extent that it did last year? Well, I, I think you're more of a Parasat SEO guy with your book. <laughs> But, um, my personal opinion would be look at SEMrush, look at the top domains to see what domains have those uh, ranking key phrases in Google. For example, YouTube, um, you know, Google, <laughs> <laughs> Google uh, sites. yeah, Google sites, um, and yeah. And apart from that, realistically, if I was going to do Parasite SEO, it would only be YouTube videos, live streams, yeah. something that can take a lot of spam. Um, I wouldn't really be looking at like Q and A's and things like that. Um, yeah, I, I don't know what what, would, what your thoughts be. Um, generally, what I found works really well at the moment is forums. So if you can kind of make a thread on a niche relevant forum, a lot of the time you'll rank regardless because of the power and authority that forum has anyway. Yeah. Um, generally, I don't like spamming stuff at all nowadays. Generally, go for like you know cheap PBN links or something tier one, and then power all that stuff up with uh, say tier two. Yeah, definitely. If like if you're gonna find a platform in your industry you're not just going to start sending a load of spam in yeah, there um high quality pbn links safe links mm -hmm. um even lower quality pbn links i've seen places like uh i know we don't like to mention it conquer uh black cat world those those type of pbn posts yeah. um so looking for uh, platforms that already rank in your industry where people in your industry are talking about for you to then go on and, and you know yeah, go through everything through uh, create your page to then rank it and send some high quality links on it um, yeah that's perfect kind of answer there um just to add on to that as well social profiles are really important in terms of actually doing parasite seo as well um the main way i use it nowadays is purely for online reputation management so generally if i'm working with a big client that has got not so great reviews on the homepage. Yeah. I'll generally put some PBNs and some social profiles, and those will generally, you know, knock out the trip advisors and uh, the Yelps of the world. So it, yeah, definitely it's a lot better. So Parasite for online reputation management, mm -hmm. and stay away from GSA or spam, and just use powerful, high quality links. Yeah, literally. Yeah, yeah, literally. yeah but because you can you can still get powerful links for a, a bargain cost, especially it's places like Sake and stuff. You can still get yeah. links for a dollar, two dollars per month. Yeah, for a really, really solid link from SAPE. And even though it's non-contextual, it still will be and even, pretty powerful. And even then, you can get inner page links from SAPE, and you can yeah. get in-text links as well, yeah, which yeah, are even, even cheaper. Yeah. So for a bigger campaign, you can make a lot of cash doing that. Yeah, 100%. Um, yeah. 
you can because online workplace management generally you can charge a lot more for that than you can SEO as well. Yeah, especially yeah. if they're a really big brand. Like yeah, I 100%. had, um, I, I sh shouldn't talk about this, but I had a very uh, big uh, client in a royal family somewhere in the world where <laughs> there was not very nice posts about them, and we pretty much knocked out all of the uh, negative. Um, posts and we actually found positive posts on the same domain and ranked them for the same phrase oh, okay. to so, actually yeah. knock out the other ones. That's pretty good idea. Yeah, on that one. and it was effective by just simply buying safe links. <laughs> yeah, well, safe so, still pretty powerful today. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Uh, basically, uh, the, sorry, the next question, Zach Gottlieb, again, sorry for brutalizing people's names, um, asks, Matt Diggity recommends a 5% anchor text ratio. What's your recommendations on anchor text? <laughs> See, this is it. This is interesting because he did follow up with saying, um, if he's going to do the same as everybody else on page one and not do the recommended ratios, is he then going to future proof himself? Um, and I, th I think it's good practice to copy what everyone else is doing. Uh -huh. But so to a competitors, yeah. But to a certain point, if they're too aggressive and you know that's going to get you slapped realistically it would make more sense to go within those ratios or counteract those ratios by building things like citations forum posts q and a's that type of thing to try and cancel it out but realistically i, I wouldn't decide to you know start building 30 percent exact match or partial match <laughs> what he describes yeah. just because everybody else is doing it i would simply try and get more powerful links more relevant links and stick within a much more safe anchor text ratio yeah 100 percent. And, and i will note as well um, I was in a consultation with someone last week, yeah. and they actually uh, they sh they showed me their research that they'd done, and they checked out that their competitors had a fifty percent anchor ratio, and they showed me this, yeah. and I was like, okay, one minute, let me go and check this quickly, and it turned out that that person actually had got seven referring domains, oh, and that was their link profile, and this guy was about to go and build fifty PBN links, oh, so fifty percent anchor ratio. So he's he's <laughs> he's read a thread to say copy your competitors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's misread the anchor text table. He didn't look how many links were actually in the yeah. playing field there. Um, and yeah, it's just uh, you know, that's something you need to be careful of, especially mm -hmm. when you're buying like site wides and things. Yeah, <laughs> make so. sure they're all branded yeah. because you're going to end up with like the same exact match anchor text exactly. for like, thousands of links. Um, um, and then also several people, as an extension to that anchor text question, yeah. uh, they asked about EMD anchor text ratios, so sites that are on exact match domains or partial match domains, what kind of anchor text ratios should you use for them? Because obviously, if you go down the branded route, or if you're down the branded route, um, yeah. you'll be using a very, very high level of EMD. Um, of exact match anchor text. Yeah. I don't do too much EMD, so I can't really comment on that. I so, usually do okay. partial match. So I'll do the main keyword and then the word guide or review on yeah, the end. Yeah, yeah. And I find that it's a little bit safer. But if I absolutely had to, I would probably only build naked URL links mm -hmm. or phrases around that actual phrase. But I would, I'm not sure I'd want to mention that brand phrase. And if I do, it would be like 10%, if that. 10%. Okay. Yeah. For, yeah. Um, um, generally, when I, I, again, I don't really do MBs either. Yeah. Um, but generally, if you're doing kind of, if you want to do the branded route, just do it as the actual domain name and variations of the domain name. Yeah. So you know, emd.com, http. Yeah, slash yeah, slash yeah HTTP. All that kind of With stuff. With www about www. Exactly. So you don't actually necessarily have to use yes. the emd. At the yeah. Moment. Yeah. So it's so. So, so, so it what you're saying is to pretty much just stay away from using the EM, emd at, at all. Yeah, yeah. And just yeah. try and make Google think that you are the brand, mm -hmm. and this is the website people type in. And that yeah, I think that's a yeah. much safer route. Yeah. Um, whenever I've, 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 I've attempted it, I have been smashed like six, seven months down the line. I have included the name as yeah. um, as that. And as soon as like a refresh, depending on something, yeah, up, it'll just obviously fuck doesn't up your site for like quite a while. Doesn't help that I was using like four hundred .ru Russian safe links. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. that will <laughs> Which probably, that. which probably triggered that. So <laughs> yeah. that will um, probably trigger a few, few layers of penguin in that one. Well, yeah, uh, not just the exact match. <laughs> um, and also as as an extension of what you're saying about not using the EMD and stuff at all, um, I'm actually like less and less using exact match or partial match even whatsoever i'm doing the on page yeah to like be really really keyword focused and then because panda is just a load of bollocks and then just linking out yeah. linking just, out with a brand key phrase exactly from so, that so, really so the links, post. yeah exactly so, yeah. so the links are the backlinks are just powering up the authority and the of, kind of position of that page whereas the actual 
the on page is what is actually ranking it for the keywords. The, the links are just giving it enough power and authority to be able to rank for that keyword. But what yeah. is actually ranking the keyword is the on page SEO. Yeah. That terms of the meta title. And yeah, I have noticed that. And I've noticed in my tests if the domain, so not just the page start, if the domain actually contains the key phrase you're trying to rank for, even a branded link from that site. Yeah, exactly. Just skyrocket yeah, your website. It's just, it's just passing the authority, yeah. passing that power. And, you know, p people yeah. have even gone out there. I haven't tried this myself, but the people have gone out there and registered a fresh domain with the key keyword there. They did a long post linked out with a branded link, and then they've sent a load of PBM posts and safe links at this fresh domain, and it's just skyrocketed their yeah. website. Yeah, yeah. Because exactly, you can't you, yeah. you can't get any more relevant exactly any more relevant than that really. Yeah, especially and, and, um, that, and then you're using zero percent access ratios as well, which means you're generally future and that's and that's something that I try and stress to people when they ask me how should I build PBM links. I always try and say build the PBM link really specific about what you're trying to rank for so that um, you get much more weight. And with that, you don't need to get super powerful PBNs. And yeah, exactly. yeah, They carry much more weight. Um, obviously, I wouldn't rely specifically my whole SEO strategy, loads of posts about my specific service and city, but a couple of those sprinkled in really do wonders and you'll need a lot less links. So. Yeah, that's, yeah so that's, the, the majority of my link budget at the moment is kind of, I'm trying to stay away from using too many PBNs at the moment yeah. just to like future-proof myself. I'm not saying that there's... I'm not Definitely. saying PBNs are dead or anything here. <laughs> I'm going to yeah. get quoted by that in the morning tomorrow. You have but, to rename our group. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the proper outreach group. <laughs> <laughs> PBNs are dead now, guys. <laughs> Just working around this. No, but I'm, I'm, I'm generally trying to use more and more pillow links as kind of, because p p like, for example, on my money pages, instead of using 10 PBN links, I'm using 10, 20 Q&A links, 10, yeah. 20 forum links. All this and stuff, but making sure that they're genuinely what's, good links. What's interesting really is this, this is what I've always stressed is that people are building these IFTT wheels, these web 2.0 properties. When you actually look on the internet, real website aren't getting links from these properties. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I'm transitioning to more a natural SEO where I'm seeing where other websites in the industry are getting these links and I'm going on these platforms and posting 100%. on these platforms rather than building these really spammy SEO links. Like yeah. to be honest, my SEO these days doesn't go much beyond citations and then natural generated links like answer pages, Q and A pages, forum posts, and yeah. then obviously outreach. Pretty much twenty five percent of my link profile is now PBNs, and I'm relying <laughs> on my outreach and all the other links, Pillow links to, to power up. yeah to, to rank. There, there was actually in relation to the real sites not actually having links and everything together. Yeah. Um, there was actually a patent that one of the group members spotted out, uh, which is the only patent that he could find that was related. And I think his name was Robert. I'm not too sure. Someone can probably find the comments of who I'm going on about. Yeah. Here. Um, he actually found out that there was a patent. The only patent that he could find after searching through all the patents that Google own related to Penguin was this one patent, which basically talks about a seed list. Yeah. And it literally talks about how Google start off their entire process by having a seed list of authenticated sites yeah. that they say, if this site has got a link to a site three layers down the way, so three links to be able to link back to that site, then it's less trusted if that site is directly yes. linking to a site. Yeah. So it's so it's literally talking about getting links that real websites would have, because yeah. that's what Google want you to essentially do. Yeah. And uh, and the, yeah, the best way to do that is trying to find ones that have authority back links themselves. So having links from like Wikipedia and like Forbes and like this. Yeah. Stuff. It's the best way to do it, really. And that's why PBNs have been working so effectively, because you're getting a stage two, essentially, link down from their first authenticated seed list of sites. Yeah. Um, let's move on to the next question. It makes it come down to quite a bit of depth. <laughs> Fascinating stuff there, guys. <laughs> um, Michael Barukowski. Barukowski, I'm hoping I got that one right. See, I told you there's more names to come as well. Uh, how many sites do you have, James, and do general niche... Uh, I think he's referring to how many PBMs. How many sorry, PBMs do I have? Do you have? And also, uh, do general niche links still work? Well, well, truthfully, I have I have sixty PBMs down from like three hundred purely because I was mainly using scrape domains. And as the yeah. years have gone on, the stats have fallen off. And there's just so many good providers out there. You know, you've got Todd Foster, Diggity Links, Freedom Links. <laughs> there's so many good PBM providers. Why yeah. would I go out my way to make a PBM? when I can just go and rent a couple of links. And then you don't have to it, have all the headache yeah, managing yeah. it. So I've just got this nice little network that I have, maintains the few clients that I've decided to keep on, and I don't need to go and build more because I can just rent them. Oh, that's um, a pretty, pretty, uh, pretty solid answer there. Yeah. Um, and also to the second part of that, do general niche links still work as well? Definitely. Um, 
for local SEO clients, what I a lot of my guys do um, is they'll do like a travel blog or a local city blog. So this PBM will be all about travel mm -hmm. around this specific city they're trying to rank in. Then they just throw all their clients on there. <laughs> a little bit risky, a little bit greater, yeah. but because it's very niche down, very high quality, mm -hmm. um, and it's around that city, it's it's general in a way, but it's still around the city. And obviously, yeah, yeah. for that city-specific key phrases, the rankings just shoot up. So that's proof right and there. And still, to an extent, topical relevancy. Yeah, it's top it. yeah and it yeah. makes sense because local chamber of commerce, they all sponsor each other and link out mm. to each other. So if you make those type of websites, that's the perfect example of a general niche PBM that works incredibly well and it still looks natural and believable to Google. So if it was a manual review and you had all this insider information about your city, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah. in fact, that's probably better than a PBM that's about, yeah, about like, like yeah. car tint, window tinting or something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's and then if you just mention these businesses across various posts where they're located mm -hmm. or exciting things they're doing for the community, that's a great niche PBM and they work fine. Yeah, and uh, to even, Further that point as well, a shout out to Joe Ash Boyson from Australia. Um, he uses sites where he basically he just invests like a thousand dollars into a uh, into a premium domain from the auction. Yeah, so it's like a ten year old domain, but it's got you know two thousand referring domains. Yeah, doesn't even make it niche relevant. Just rebuilds yeah. a site and web archive, and then just links back from in which what I was saying to you back earlier. He uses image links or he uses even cloak links, and sometimes yeah, and just links back. And because of the overall authority and the power of that domain. Doesn't need to pass any relevance because it's just passing a ton of authority. Yeah. So it's just, it works. yeah. At the end of the day, links are a ranking signal, and yeah. the other way to factors on the page do help with the links, but links are what work. I, so. I think I think niche relevancy and topical relevancy is more focused on on page yeah. than it is, and on your site. So having all your pages kind of niche relevant and stuff tends to be a lot more of a ranking factor than the niche relevancy of your actual backlinks. And obviously, obviously, like some links are going to yeah. be more important to have that niche relevant than others. But generally, it's more topical relevancy and niche And I think what people page. don't realize as well is that you can't control who links to you. Exactly. So, <laughs> so if you're, yeah, so if you're naturally crying links, Google has to take these things into consideration and pass the juice equally. 100%. So, you know, <laughs> relevance realistically in the grand scheme of things, if your link profile is solid, you can throw in a couple high powered general links and you'll, you'll rank. Yeah, so that's pretty easy then. Um, Okay, next on to uh, Simon True L. I'm going to go with True L there. Uh, he has a few questions, and the first one is, what have you been up to for the last year and a half, James? <laughs> Where have you been? I've just been chilling on the beach on my laptop <laughs> and traveling the world. Um, and, and basically, uh, what I've been doing is I went off into the gambling niche mm -hmm. where I built several websites in several gray market countries, let's say, um, and we were spending almost six figures a month in links, so high five figures. Yeah. That's how my link service was then born because I was simply buying links at crazy scale. <laughs> um, and what happened is we were getting up to like 800 players, 1,000 players a month. Wow. And the government basically came and said, look, you guys can't advertise here anymore. And they're just <laughs> handing out like million dollar fines, all these different wow. casinos. And pretty much a whole affiliate empire just got shut down. <laughs> Um, which Something you know it does, yeah, yeah, it does happen. So I've pretty much had to start from scratch on that front, while still having the existing play database that we generated. Mm -hmm. um, and obviously, I'm looking at expanding to other avenues where someone's not just going to come down and say, "Look, you can't advertise here anymore." And slap you um, the phone. <laughs> and obviously, you know that's the risks involved. And even the thing is, people might laugh and people might say. Um, that won't happen to me, but we've just seen what's happened with Amazon where they just slashed everybody's commissions down. Some people have won, some people have lost. So realistically, that can happen to anybody. Um, and unfortunately, that happened to me where I'd built something huge and pretty much 80% of revenue from that thing was just knocked out overnight. Wow. Um, yeah. and, you know, and since then, I've been re rebuilding the link service, building out a load of affiliate websites, nurturing my local websites. And, you know, realistically, um, I think we've got a big opportunity with proper PBN group and things to, you know, build build the community up again. And, you know, it's really, really exciting to get back into the swing of things and everything. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, so... So, so we'll be, you've heard it here first. We'll be hearing some more James Gregory videos yeah. on the horizon. <laughs> and hopefully we can get some more live streams going. We get Dignity yeah. on. We get Holly on. And, you know, if you guys watched the previous episodes before, at one point we had, like, eight people around a big <laughs> table 
where hundreds would tune in every yeah. single week. So if we can get that back up again, uh, that's what I'd hope to do. Um, and apart from that, I've just been ranking websites. I've been active now and again. I've been helping people out. Um, and yeah, and just generally, generally, just be doing SEO, live, <laughs> live, breathe, and SEO. Yeah. Except now, since opened up my link service, I have probably accessed like ninety websites and correlations and data. <laughs> And lots of exciting stuff that I can obviously share with everyone. Yeah, it's a bit more case study based. Yeah, yeah, so I'm looking to release a lot of case studies um, and obviously work more closely with Charles as, as well because he's, he's only down the road until he, until he jets off somewhere else again. <laughs> um, yeah, what else would Simon want to do? Uh, yeah, well? so, he's, so he's got two more questions. The first one, which is a bit of a more lifestyle question. Yeah. Um, basically, he's finishing up his exams and moving full time to Chiang Mai. A lot of people have been doing recently um, in a few months' time, and he's basically asking, as a graduate with limited finances, limited capital, etc., and I'm moving to uh, Chiang Mai full time. What would your advice be for the next few months? Yes. Yeah. Well, funny enough, I actually speak to Simon regularly, and he's yeah. he's a really really cool guy, and he's very switched on. And my advice to Simon wouldn't be uh, really SEO related because he knows what to do. If you're going to go to Chiang Mai, uh, <laughs> I think that's how you say it. Um, I would. Start going to the networking events that Dignity hosts, definitely. Yeah. Start going to all the meetups, network with other um, affiliates, and start maybe sharing assets and tactics, ideas, mm -hmm. and then start getting ideas on how you can scale um, and generally become active active with the SEO community because I know that's like becoming the SEO capital of the world. Yeah, with like, um, I think there's about 300 SEOs. Yeah, I think definitely like I'll, I'll be looking to go out there definitely mm -hmm. with everyone. I'm going um, to be at the DT Mastermind meetup as well. Yeah. I'm speaking there and we're doing a live Q&A with myself and Matt DT. Yeah. So I'm hoping to do a live stream as well with him when I'm out there. Yeah. Uh, and then his awesome. uh, third and final question, have you found that having more links from your competitors uh, will actually hold you back from, no sorry, have you, let me start this question again. Have more, you found that having more links from your uh, than your competitors will hold you back due to Google, or is this just Google propaganda? Um, so what he's saying there is if he's trying to rank on page one, everyone has about 10, 12 links, mm -hmm. but he has 100 links, he's not going to be able to rank fast enough because Google will see he's doing active SEO. So like sandbox him or something They'll like sandbox him. Yeah. The thing is, with his industries, I, that would lead me to believe that a lot of them might be hiding their links behind uh, redirects or um, you know if they're just hiding their PBNs, yeah, yeah. HD access. Um, so he should check, you know, for example, that video you just released, how to find hidden PBN yeah. links, and actually get an accurate <laughs> representation of how many links the competitors have, and then build from that. Mm -hmm. But realistically, just don't build all the hundred in one go. Build them over maybe a three six month period of time and see how it goes. You wouldn't just approach it and just build a hundred and pray for the yeah. best. <laughs> Realistically, you want to try and make it normality and look mm -hmm. at the link velocity in the industry. Yeah. Um, because if you do go in all guns blazing, you might get sandbox for six, eight months. But in my experience, when I did that in gambling, where I was just from day one, 300 referring domains <laughs> on the strongest websites possible, <laughs> just saying, fuck it, let's spend 20K on links, <laughs> the best gambling links possible. Yeah. We just got sandboxed, rank 30, and literally, suddenly uh probably seven to eight months in it just suddenly shot up rank five rank three rank one yeah so it yeah, works yeah. but you'll get yeah. sandbox for a really long time and then all of a sudden it will just pop yeah so yes yeah, so that's why you need to do your yes. niche and perpetual analysis yeah so you need to yeah. really drill deep if, if they're using the hidden links look at the new and backlink session on majestic see how many links they get in every single month yeah. and try and build around that kind of pattern mm -hmm. Um, because again, you will stand out if all of a sudden. And, and at the same time, it also depends on: is it a brand new domain? Is it an expired domain? Is it a yeah. new domain? Has your site been up for however many? Have, like, is the site actually a pre-existing site? So is it a client site or is it a brand new affiliate site? And, and the so, thing um, he asked that as if he hasn't built the site yet. Yeah. He might find once he builds the site and he builds the same amount of links as everyone else, he might be ranking on the first page. So it's, yeah, so yeah, just work out. He, he kind of needs to take action and and do that rather than. You know, just hypothetically ask that. Yeah, know, yeah. I would say. Um, okay, so that's all the Simon's questions then. We've got another one who's got a ton of more questions here from Natasha Lynch. Uh, the first question, which we've kind of already covered, is does SAPE still work in 2017? Um, I know we covered it um, earlier, but I, th 
I think it does work in the instances where we talked about online reputation management, mm -hmm. where you've got a load of properties and you just want to rent a load of links and just rank them up or get a positive article on that website to rank. But um, direct at money sites are English websites, so google.co.uk or google.com. I would use it very sparingly with really strict filters. And even then, hidden footer links and things are really big, like red flag to Google. And even though they do work, if I was to do it, I would do a hidden 301 redirect so that no competitors could see that link, those safe links even point to my website. So okay. obviously they're not there to be reported. And then obviously I'll be getting the SEO benefit from that. And the only way I can actually get penalized is via the algorithm. And if it's a clean website, because obviously the safe links are clean yeah. in a sense, even though they could be compromised websites, um, you'll get a website clean anchor text, a link from a clean website, and no one's there to even report that it's SAPE along a really balanced link profile. You can use SAPE, and I, I can bet my life on this, <laughs> that there's a very slim chance that you would get penalized if you were to use it like that. Yeah, pr yeah, um, so good. But it would make far more sense to just get a couple throwaway PBNs and just use them all at tier two. Yeah, that's literally what I do. I use it tier yeah. two all day long. Yeah. yeah. I've, I've done it direct a few times, but that's generally when I sit, I sit looking at say for an hour yeah. and find sites that would actually, like, I'd actually get a link from if I was like, One just... big opportunity though, on the other Googles, you know, the Swedish speaking countries, little mm -hmm. countries like New Zealand and things, the algorithm really hasn't caught up to the group, to the bigger Googles. Mm -hmm. So you can get away with blasting SAPE direct at your website and you can run little experiments where you do EMDs and things. And within like two months, you can get some good traffic and good ranks. Yeah, so, if you're I gonna know, do well, I know a few people in the group actually do yeah. safe direct to like yeah, safe sites direct. In Sweden. Um, but in terms of doing client sites, long term affiliate sites, <laughs> safe is would be quite risky doing it direct. A couple mm. throwaway PBNs, send them there, or a couple really high quality outreach yeah. posts. You, you can mix it in a little bit as well. So if you're building a hundred links, you know, 10, yeah. 10 PBN, tons of other links, stuff. Yeah, then just mix up one or two. Like what I touched on earlier, you, you can't control who links to you. So if all of a sudden loads of websites start giving you homepage links, <laughs> blended in your really natural link profile of all the activities mm -hmm. we were talking about earlier with the citations and things, realistically, what's five really high quality homepage links when you've got 200 really nice ones? Yeah, 100. So, and so many people don't use uh, the, the in-text feature as well. Yeah. Which is just... But, to, to answer, Everyone wants homepage safe links, which yeah. is like just you're missing but out on a lot. To answer your question, Natasha, safe links do work because links work and links are the primary ranking factor in Google. <laughs> so safe links will always work, yeah. regardless of what anyone says. Mm -hmm. you, yeah, you'll always find links. I know people that are still don't do this, but like, I know people that are still using social bookmark links to like rank local sites and stuff. Yeah. So every, when people say you know link types don't work and stuff, generally they're talking like kind of shit. Yeah. Um, Okay, so next question out of five uh, is, I publish an infographic, how would I go about acquiring links for it? For an infographic? Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's going to be a little bit of a long-winded long -winded answer, but you know, infographic submission is something I really like to do on my website because you can just get so many crazy high-quality links for pretty much, pretty much next to nothing. Yeah. Um, I had a really nice infographic designed by um, Bulldog, uh, Bulldog Digital Media, you know Gareth, Gareth. Yeah, Gareth um, and we basically launched a crazy campaign where we looked at visually and mm -hmm. we looked at every single infographic in that industry, went on AREFs and actually looked at every single link that they've acquired from their infographic yeah. and essentially stealing all these points from these infographics to make a really relevant high quality infographic building up this really big list of people that have already linked to the successful infographic mm -hmm. and actually hitting up these people that have already landed links on that website. So we're pretty much sure fire to get our infographic placed on that website because they've already placed a relevant infographic, but then taking it a step further and looking at their backlinks and their backlinks and just making a huge niche relevant list. And we're talking like 6,000 emails where I'd blast <laughs> out an email with the embed code and I would be randomizing the embed code where I'd have a little disclaimer so you link to the infographic, you link out to the post when you click the infographic, but the disclaimer at the bottom would actually say my, what my website's about and would have a partial match link to a page of my website and I would ha essentially have this spun with different <laughs> links to different websites. Yeah. So when I'm doing this 6,000 email blast, I'm getting random links at random different pages across all these websites. So there's been campaigns where we've landed like 60 links 
they might not, some of them might not have been the best, but we're talking some of them being government websites, yeah, yeah. really high quality and educational websites. Now because of the spinning. And because of I'm randomizing what I'm actually blasting out in the emails, that embed code is sending to different pages on my website. So you have this popping off with outreach with PBNs. It's it, yeah, it's a no brainer. Yeah. That infographic, you know, I should probably make a tutorial on that. Because, uh, <laughs> well, there you go, next video. <laughs> so it's hopefully, great. Natasha, if you go on visually, get all those successful infographics, hit up those guys that have already published infographics in your industry and steal all those really good ones. We'll obviously make them better and do yeah, a little yeah. spin off. Cite those people and just contact them, and you will land crazy, really high quality infographic links for free. Well, there you go. Have it. And obviously, awesome. all the infographic submission websites as well. There's yeah, there's, 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 there. yeah, there's yeah. tons out there. If you literally just Google infographics submission yeah. websites, you'll find I think like 250 or something. But but don't go don't go on Fiverr and don't go on yeah. and don't get those blasts because those blasts are really low quality and it's like a some kind of spammy press release that this. Yeah, it's, it's literally like it's literally yeah. like people who are doing press release services on Fiverr yeah, just doing the exact same thing, but they'll just copy and paste your yeah. infographic. Google infographic submission or look at tutorials that do it and just submit on those high quality websites. And obviously put it on visually as well. Yeah. But if you put your infographic on visually, there's a good chance that I will come <laughs> and steal your infographic and all the links you required from your infographic. So be careful. <laughs> okay. Uh, next uh, question from Natasha. Um, best tiered link building strategy for 2017. Um, the best tiered link building strategy would not involve any automated tools, GSA, yeah. bookmarks. She actually, actually did go into a little bit there, which says no GSA and stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'll pretty much what we touched on earlier. Mm -hmm. Those um, PBM posts, obviously, don't start doing this to other people's PBNs. <laughs> um, the tiered strategy would be have a really high quality PBM post, mm -hmm. really good on page in that post, send like five SAP links at it. You've got another PBM post, five SAP links at that. Um, I wouldn't go to safe links yeah. everywhere throughout. Yeah. yeah, and you know what would be nice as well is send a safe link at the homepage, but also send it directly at the post as well. Yeah, yeah. So it looks like that brand new post is getting shared. I, I actually just do it always just to the inner post. Yeah, just just yeah, the post. Yeah, because I don't um, I don't do it to the uh, homepage. I feel as if you'd get more of a boost if you have other pages on the on the website. You interlink to that post as well. Yes, yeah, so you've been like yeah. supporting content. You know, that's around. something I've really yeah. noticed. I just want to touch on this. A lot of people have been ordering links from me to blog posts on their website, mm -hmm. and I'm noticing that they're going up. The the phrases that they're not directly targeting because they're doing blog posts on the website, and the blog posts are getting posts. This is completely baffles me how it's <laughs> working, but the supporting posts and making the main phrases rank even yeah. after we've been sending links at their main homepage. Yeah, 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 because it's the topical relevance. Yeah, it's work. the topical relevance. And yeah. it's, it's becoming it, more of an authority. It, it's fascinating for me because yeah. I've all, I've always only sent links to pages that actually generate me income or money. Oh, so only to money pages? Yeah. No, I, yeah, I, I do it, yeah. so that's what I mean. So my strategy around that kind of stuff is I'll build all the supporting blog posts around this page, and then I'll put all the PBN links that I'm buying that aren't necessarily yeah. really legitimate PBN links. You know the cheap kind of stuff that's like ten to fifty dollars a yeah. post. Um, I put all those kind of links straight to my supporting content. Yeah. With the supporting content linking back with partial and, and yeah, that much yeah, money page. And that because of how Penguin Four Point now works, where it's a page by page link basis. Yeah. If those PBNs were to ever get to index or something, it would only be the supporting content that gets hit. Yeah. It wouldn't pass on that penalty to the internal link page. Yeah. So that's so it's basically so you, a layer of protection. Yeah. You're around. lowering risk as well. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. That's yeah. Which is funny because a lot of the people that are doing this are e-commerce websites. Yeah, yeah. So, you know, that's, yeah. that's really interesting. So 2017, the best tiered strategy is going to be sending a load of safe, cheap PBN links, but your high quality PBN links. Um, and then obviously we touched on <laughs> yeah. sending links to your um, internal pages, which I think is a really important post, um, you know, move, point moving forwards for 2017, I think. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, my, my, exactly the same for me. Tier link building wise, just SAP and sometimes cheap PBNs tier two. Yeah. Don't really use anything else. You know, tier yeah. one. As long as the tier one links are powerful enough, they don't really need tier two links. Obviously, it is good to power them up, especially in more competitive industries and stuff as well. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so on to her next question. What would yes. your advice be for earning quick cash as a newbie SEO? That was uh, Natasha again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We've got one more question from her as well. Is this question? Yeah. Oh, so, well. yeah. So yeah. it's interesting because I know that she works at an agency, and I was wondering why she wants to know how to make quick cash from SEO. Oh no, um, sorry, sorry, not a, sorry. As a newbie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, wait, 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 yeah, yeah, as a newbie yeah. SEO. Yeah. Okay. So 
interestingly, a lot of people would say build out ranking web websites, build out affiliate websites. Mm -hmm. I personally think as a newbie SEO, the best thing you can do is stay away from all the SEO communities and circles, <laughs> learn how to sell, get a really good course on acquiring SEO clients, mm -hmm. and build your cash flow with like 10 local clients, mm -hmm. and then just simply purchase and rent links from other people and kind of learn as you go, build up your cash flow, because what's essentially happening is you're getting paid before you've even done anything. Yeah. So if you get 10 clients and they give you 10 grand, you've got that 10 grand now, and you can go spend two grand on a load of PBN links, and you've got all that money there to play with to then venture into other projects. But that's Perfect. the fastest way to get money from SEO without essentially spending anything. Realistically, you need a good landing yeah. page and then maybe some cold email templates, some lumpy mail packages. And a bit of a personality helps uh, yeah, as well. A, a bit of a personality. <laughs> get some really good sales books, mm -hmm. Grant Cardone, Seller Be Sold, Spin Selling, that type of thing. Mm -hmm. Um, work on body language, tonality, that type of yeah. thing. Go to your local chamber of commerce, introduce yourself, give them a free presentation. Yeah, give them a free presentation how to do on page SEO. Give them a little business card that says we'll set up your social media profiles. They've paid like tw 25 quid, 50 quid for your social media profiles, maybe 100 quid. Yeah. <laughs> and then you can then just upsell them SEO because they've already paid you know, a little thing to get foot in the door. Yeah. yeah. And as a newbie SEO, that is the best way to make cash. Yeah, just literally get other so, people to give you cash. I, I think, I think especially if you, and if, as a newbie SEO, uh, a complete newbie, probably the best thing to do is actually go and work for an agency yeah. and then build up your actual yeah. client SEO. And it's interesting because yeah. I know the Tasha's purchased links from me that she works at an agency. Yeah. So I think <laughs> what she's doing is she wants to know how she can escape the agency life yeah. to then become a full time SEO. Mm -hmm. Which interestingly, how I got into SEO because I was working at a company that I found you. Yeah. Then you told me to go work at SEO agency, <laughs> yeah. and eventually I went and joined an SEO agency. Within six months of being there, you um, yeah, yeah, I've learned so much. Built out all my own websites, got my own clients. Mm -hmm. We built BHC, and I just quit my job. Yeah. yeah so realistically, to do that same route, to just go out there, get shed load of clients, get your cash flow up, nurture those clients, build something yeah, up. Because well, the reason I gave you that recommendation in the first place. Was and this is still a recommendation that I'd give to anyone who's looking to start out in SEO is go and work for an agency. Yeah, it's because number one, they have all the tools paid for, so you can get access to all of these tools that would normally cost thousand dollars a month for all yeah. combined, if not more, if you buy an agency. So that's all well. majestics, S S H yeah. everything. Arash. Um, and then also you get access to clients that you can play around with without spending any money. So they'll so they'll give you a budget for that yeah. client. And you actually have you know, you then go and do all the that's work. That's what the that. big thing was yeah. for me. We had some, some huge global brands and stuff, exactly. and we had to do crazy outreach for them. Yeah. We had small, little, local clients. Shows you how to scale as well, and, yeah. how to manage, and how to manage clients. You learn so much working for an agency because if you just go and dive headfirst into making your own agency, you're going to run into hurdle after hurdle. Yeah, after hurdle. you learn you how, how to communicate experience. with clients. You learn how exactly. to do reporting. You learn mm -hmm. how to do meetings. I'd work there and I'd got to an account manager role, whereas I was face to face with clients. Yeah, yeah. And if I didn't have that now, now when I go face to face with clients, I wouldn't have had that confidence. Yeah. So it's pretty much a must. If you're a newbie, newbie, go for an agency first. You know, if you're just doing a normal job, mm -hmm. go for an agency, then go and get a load of clients. And while I was at the agency, I would come home five, be home half five, from half five to twelve at night. I would literally be building up my other SEO business. At my lunch time, I'll do a bit of SEO business. Exactly. Just quit your job. Yeah. But... Bad enough, you you'll make the time to do it. So yeah. the time where you guys are watching Netflix at night, you know, watching funny videos on the internet. Yeah, grinding. <laughs> yeah. It should be grinding time. Yeah. When Netflix. you when you're using Grinder and Tinder, <laughs> put all that energy and focus into learning <laughs> SEO. Yeah. Just grind it out. Um, no. Yeah. The and to take that to the next level as well. Um, SEO jobs pay well. Like a lot of a lot of people yeah. are like, I'm working like a dead end job. Yeah. What can I do to make money now? Well, go and be a junior SEO. For example, in the UK, as a junior SEO, you can earn like a thousand to one thousand six hundred pounds a month as a junior yeah. SEO, and that's like a pretty good salary in the yeah. UK. As like an account manager, you're talking like up to up to three grand a month as like a manager yeah. and as, as yeah. an SEO manager. There's, there's people out there in London that have just got mid level account manager roles at like yeah. 50, 60k. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, exactly. is, which is ridiculous. Yeah, exactly. You know, like, for, yeah, some, in terms of yeah. realistic. Um, Same kind of levels yeah. like dentists. Yeah, and, and obviously like that. that's in pounds. Yeah. So for the UK guys, that'd be like, for the US guys, that'd be like $78,000 a month. Yeah, exactly. And that's uh, a year, sorry. And that's, that's 
a career. A, yeah, yeah, it's a career in itself. A, a, a career in yeah. which you're actually learning how to do SEO. And then you learn. And you could just business. take all those skills. Yeah. And, and if you don't have many living expenses as well, yeah. you can start building up your capital from that job. So you're not actually spending anything apart. Obviously, you have to pay for your food and your rent and that. Yeah. Stuff. But a lot of the time, you can actually earn extra money. So just even 200, 300 pounds for six months over that six months time, that gives you a couple of grand to play around with, yeah. which is more than enough to build up your affiliate website or JB with someone else who's already got a few affiliate yeah. websites. And then obviously, you put all of your effort into that affiliate website and do all the work and have them supply some of the capital links, that kind of stuff. That obviously, a, a newbie wouldn't actually yeah. be able to afford or have the connections and ability. To I still, I still would stress to maybe get clients before that mm -hmm. because I feel as if acquiring clients and being able to nurture them and keep them is a more stable income yeah, in the yeah, sense yeah, that yeah, affiliate 100%. websites could be kind of risky. Obviously, I got slightly burnt when my network shut down and the whole <laughs> country was just turned off from casino. <laughs> um obviously expanding your baskets um Current but then again you still want to focus on and master one thing mm -hmm. so i think the ideal path would be work at an seo agency build up those skills build up your people skills your sales skills your presenting skills then move over so and actually own get yeah, clients. yeah yeah get yeah. clients have your own agency getting consistent income consistent um clients so then you can start scaling up that client business to the point where you're hiring someone else they're working alongside with you. They're managing all your clients full time because essentially, I know you guys, client guys, will, will sympathise with me. Managing your clients is a full time job in itself. <laughs> you hire someone to manage all these clients and grow the agency. All of a sudden, you've got an agency running itself, bringing you in 10, 20k a month, and you suddenly have 10, 20k a month to play with, which is a massive amount of money in affiliate. Yeah, in affiliate yeah. or PPL, rank and rent. Mm -hmm. You, I, I think actually we, that, that was something a lot of people, a lot of uh, the newbie kind of SEOs were trying to get into ranking rent. Yeah. And I was just saying, don't do it. Like, rank, the problem is, I actually had someone I was speaking to last week who had done a pool cleaning uh, ranking rent site. Yeah. And he and he'd invested $2,000, $3,000, which is all of his money into it. And then no one wanted his, no, 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 <laughs> no one wanted to rent it. Yeah. So, like, it's like that's, that's one to do ranking rent and to actually be able to get your money back from it, you have to on scale. So, you have to do. 20 sites, 30 sites, yeah. to be able to have that, because some of the sites just won't sell. If, if, you, if you've done, obviously, if you've done your niche research and everything yeah. properly, then you will be able to sell them. But some sites just won't sell, so I you need to if the, ev the evergreen niches scale. that aren't specifically uh, seasonal, mm -hmm. um, where it's there's not much competition, you can, go, you can get up there with 10 PBM links, a load of citations, Easy. but those yeah. would be the ones to go for. Yeah. And I think that would be more stable than trying to make a niche site or an affiliate website. Mm -hmm. Um, but I do think that clients would be that initial step in terms Quite of the, are the, the most stable, but, but also the biggest pain in the ass in the yeah, entire yeah. world. <laughs> you know, I, there's a reason why I cut off pretty much most of my clients because <laughs> it was, you know, it, it, essentially it's not fair on them if I can't devote devote my time to supporting yeah. them and things. And sometimes you need to be clear with them. If you need customer service and things, yeah. we're not the agency for you for handholding. Something. We'll get you the results, but we'll we're not going like, to speak to you every single day and yeah. like, be your therapist. And we'll, 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 we'll give you weekly reports and we'll do yeah. short emails with each other and we'll have a monthly call. Mm -hmm. But some clients expect calls every single day. Yeah, They'll be ringing you at yeah. 4 a.m. We've dropped five places. <laughs> you know, it's it, 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 so it, on the Google dance and then they like yeah. start exploring into everything. And, and then, then come you, back to the you get things website. like previous SEO agencies built bad PBMs. Yeah. They get penalized once you get on with them. And then. Mm -hmm. You've got all of that headache to deal with, but for yeah. the cash flow and the experience, and I feel as if everyone has to go through has to go through that struggle to get to it. But saying that, there has been a few cases. For example, Simon, who um, asked the question earlier, he didn't get into client SEO. He did rank and rent, and he'd been building up his affiliate um, over years while being at school. So yeah, he's not he's not had exactly. any clients. <laughs> yeah. So us saying that, there's people out there that are killing it in, in affiliate, and they went straight to affiliate. Yeah, but, but, but that, it just requires so much dedication in yeah. terms of learning. And, and, and obviously, he's living at home with his parents. He doesn't have yeah. those. He doesn't have exactly, family exactly, and kids. Exactly. Realistically, if you're you know late twenties, thirties, forties, fifties, you you would have the good people skills required to go out there and acquire a client. To be honest, and that yeah. would be a mo much more stable form of income exactly. initially. But um, if you don't, if you are at home and you're kind of have yeah. no capital, but you're just doing it, just fucking learn everything you can. Yeah. Like speak to people, network, get people, get a mentor. Just read every blog yeah. post that you can get your hands on. Read every YouTube video that you can get your hands on, and make logical decisions. Don't ever let your emotions play with SEO, yeah. or you will fail. 
and, that is the problem. And just just on that, I, what I found with me, I was someone that's absorbed so much information. I read your God of SEO blog <laughs> front to back so many times. Um, but one of the big things with me was to actually start taking action on the information that I read. Yeah. There was I was a couple of months where all I was doing was reading, and it wasn't until I went to the SEO agency and I realized I do this action, this is the result. As yeah. soon as you have that realization, it's just literally straight on from there. You're making websites, you're ranking websites. So it's take action on what you learn and get that first yeah. website up. Even if it's just a little local website that you're going to rent out for, for like $600 a month or something, just get it it's up still there. still $600 a month. Yeah. If, if you do that yearly, is you know, yeah. $7,200 a month. So <laughs> hopefully, as a newbie SEO, that gives someone some clarity on what they can do and they're kind of stepping into their own career path because eventually, two, three years down the line, you could have 50k a month agency, 100%. 50k a month um, in affiliate commissions, you know, Amazon websites, that type of thing. Um, and we have so many case studies like that. The amount of people that joined our group in 2014 oh, that are now yeah. Yeah. Are now millionaires. Um, we, we've yeah, we've seen guys posting Lamborghinis in the group, <laughs> and that is literally just from taking action. So I mean, yeah, I've literally, I literally know people that have well just gone crazy. You know, they started out like. I know there's a specific person in the group that I won't mention his name because he's like keep lucky. But he he was literally he was earning two million pounds a year in a job, and then the recession hit in the UK, completely screwed him over. Yeah. The business that he's working with got like sued for going bankrupt and stuff. He lost loads of money. He's got five kids or something, yeah. um, and just lost all his money. And joined the Facebook group in 2014, and now he's got a business that employs 12 people off the back of being in a huge amount of debt as well. Yeah. And just like living the dream, being able to like support his family properly and everything, and it's incredible what, how much growth we've seen over the years from people. Yeah, um, and the group's actually coming up to three years old very soon as well. So that's yeah, quite cool. and it was just think it was literally September, September Se 20, 2014. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the fourth of September is when the group was created. Yeah, yeah. You invite me. I might get that tattooed on my arm. Yeah, that was that was <laughs> the day we finally took out all the Becker's audience <laughs> and put them into our group and made this crazy following. <laughs> and it's just grown ever since. Um, um, and, the, and the final one uh, from Natasha, and then we'll move on to the actual chat questions. Though it is coming, <laughs> we've only got about 15 or so minutes left. Um, what is the best way to get into affiliate SEO with zero experience? So we've kind of semi-covered that, but maybe we can. So that's zero experience on actually building affiliate websites. Um, and you know, this is a little bit of a plug for your course, but your course for me, was a real eye opener in building my recent affiliate websites, mainly the really big content pages. Yeah, content so before I would make 1,000 word pages, now I'm doing 6,000 word pages, table of contents, I'm going, um, and, and these aren't like really generic stuff, this is actual stuff that's going to rank around that phrase. So I would recommend as a newbie to affiliate SEO, get Charles's affiliate SEO course, because it will just save you so much hassle and headache <laughs> You you got themes, you've got the plugins you need. Yeah, yeah, literally everything you go um, step. And then you know the different country affiliate links, easy as a plugin. I didn't even know about that. Yeah. Um, which a massive eye, eye opener for me. Yeah. Um, and also your access to the Facebook group as well. Without plugging this too much, that's just Facebook group where you can harass me. Has however yeah. however many questions but, you want but, and we'll answer. But for me, someone I that is competent with looking at the website and being able to make a a clone of it or whatever, I thought that I knew everything there was to do with affiliate and then I read your course. And there were so many nuggets of information that me as someone that'd be advanced at building websites and things that I just couldn't believe I missed. And then I applied it to my own websites and thought, oh wow, this is actually, <laughs> this is actually working. This is actually really cool. So yeah. as a newbie to affiliate SEO, I would stay away from the CPA offers and things mm -hmm. initially, hop on Charles's course, build out a really small um, affiliate website in Amazon because Amazon is stable. Yeah. They like to mess up their commissions and things, but it's probably <laughs> the most stable affiliate program out there yeah. realistically. And then maybe start looking at doing other offers and things and the CPA <laughs> and things. Um, but realistically, as a newbie getting into affiliate, it would just be build a small website around a specific niche and then just do a load of long posts on it and follow everything in Charles's course. And you will be able to just crank out affiliate sites pretty much from Left that. Right center, yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, um, just to like kind of because we've got we haven't got that much time left because we took quite a while answering all of those original questions. Yeah. So next Q and A, ask it in the group before instead of asking them in the chat here. Um, so we'll just kind of hot fire through some questions. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Vadim and someone else. Uh, well, Vadim and, <laughs> and uh, Psychoactive. I like your name. Asks. Uh, who, what are the best link? Sorry, Vadim and Jer Giron asked, "Who are the best link providers?" 
in the world. Obviously, your man here, James Gogan, yeah. is a link provider. So. Yeah, I do some amazing work with outreach, close to 6,000 websites now. Mm -hmm. We can get your links placed within like five, 10 days. Um, fresh posts, Charles, your your service is yeah. is ridiculous from what I've heard anyway. <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying to get samples from him for free. <laughs> Maybe we could do some kind of exchange. Yeah. But, well, you know, we literally last last month, uh, Love to Link had forty five thousand dollars yeah. in revenue and orders from the previous that's that's literally the first month that I started working with Dan Parker. Um, and the previous month we had like five thousand or something. But yeah. we started marketing really heavily last month. Yeah. Um, and our orders we had like we had to place over four hundred we yeah. had to write over 400 new links yeah. and then we had to place them so there's a bit of a delay in orders but uh love to dot link for that and then james gregory yeah. is james something yeah orders, james um, orders at just just give me just give me an email at james orders at mail.com mm -hmm. but i am doing a big white label seo brand and there's lots of things coming oh, around oh, that cool. yeah. um where i'll be offering other stuff around those links um but it's going to be catered to more towards seo agencies and people looking to resell seo mm -hmm. and then mainly directly the businesses and things so you can just hit up the BHC Marketplace. Um, Facebook group. Yeah, the, yeah, our sister Facebook group. Mm -hmm. Contact me through there or email through there. And obviously, Charles' service is bang on. Um, I know Gareth Simpson, he offers yeah, a, a more tailored uh, service yeah, yeah. specifically per campaign, per project mm -hmm. as well. I've used that before in the past and I had really good yeah, results. They are really good links. Um, really, really good. And then just like other quick honorable mentions uh, Diggity, Todd Foster, yeah. In Valley, PBN Butler. Uh, and then some various other people that I probably have yeah. go at me and yeah. PM me for not mentioning. Todd, yeah, Todd Foster's links are really, really yeah, they're solid. really effective. Um, for one purely person. because he's got thousands of PBMs, <laughs> um, and he does a really good I deal. Think he has like eight thousand, um, nine thousand. Obviously, now. yeah, and you yeah. can't you can't go wrong with Diggity's links as well. Yeah. It's just um, hard to get on his invite list if you aren't already. <laughs> yeah, so make sure you got a nice website. <laughs> yeah, literally, and make sure you have a nice budget. <laughs> um, um, and. Quickly going through, I'm trying to go through this live chat. And obviously, um, for the citations as well, PBM Butler is really good provider, really solid. Yeah, and social signals. Um, yeah, really good social signals directly through your money sites. You know, every website I make, whether it's um, local or affiliate, will always get citations from PBM Butler. Mm -hmm. um, that's something I've always said since 2014. <laughs> it wasn't until Diggity released his post to say, do do it, and he did the study that everyone started doing it now. <laughs> Everyone's been waiting. I'm still waiting for him to give me a shout out on that post, but I think I'll be waiting years for that. Um, and then there's just a quick one that I can answer. New site link building timeline. I've literally just released a video on my channel, so just click on the channel about link building for a brand new site. Um, awesome. Again, from Blackthorn, it's that same question. Uh, only successful SEOs can afford. Apparently, only a successful SEOs can afford rips jeans. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Site Reactive asks, is Alex, Alex Becker scamming? <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'm only joking. Um, well, to an extent. Well, anyway, we'll, we'll move on from that. We're just an example <laughs> of someone that's grown very big where customer service might lack somewhere. But I think yeah. his intentions are always good. And he does provide well. nuggets. <laughs> And his shares, and he's got a likable personality. But yeah, he's, he's a he's a good salesman. He's just not necessarily a good SEO. Purely from the basis, like have you have you seen his 2015 best backlinking strategy, where he puts his best PBNs at tier three, yeah. and then like he puts PBNs under no follow links yeah. and things like. That. Yeah. That's just, anyway, like I said, we'll move on there. <laughs> uh, press five if you like Alex Becker. No, press five if you think Alex Becker is a scam. <laughs> Um, question, do you guys still do broken link building and is it worth getting a VA to do it? I personally don't really go through the effort of doing it, finding four or fours of things. I would, I just have way more fun dipping into my outreach database, 6,000 websites, <laughs> drop a hundred links yeah. or just get a really nice infographic made, just go head over to Bulldog, get a really nice infographic made and then just blast it out. And just, yeah. Like why even do broken link building? Just yeah. do, just do live link building where you yeah, just literally link. steal your competitors links yeah and just like offer money to all the people that i feel as if a couple of hours on majestic you know i did a video yeah. once using click hunter where you put your competitors in see all the links that they all have where it's mm -hmm. they match just hit up all those guys because they've linked to two people in your industry yeah. there's so many things to do if people actually sat there and looked at all these tools and looked for the industry they could literally get so many links for free even. yeah yeah it's really um, so i think like those techniques while they're effective um, it's more people that are in like an agency or whatever, and they're just running through a checklist of stuff they have yeah, to do. Exactly. Um, but realistically, you know, try it. If it works, it works. But 
you know, going out there fixing the internet. I think realistically, the only time I'd do that is if there was a really nice resource on Wikipedia, throw it on my website and then update on Wikipedia mm -hmm. to get a nice Wikipedia link. That's probably the only time I'd do it realistically. Yeah. So I wouldn't, yeah, I wouldn't want to go through all that trouble just to, <laughs> you know, get all these resources republished. Well, well the, the easy way to do it is literally just get your, just get your competitors money pages, yeah. your top 100 niches, export their links from Ahrefs, stick them in BuzzSumo and email every single one that's a blogger saying, I'll give you $100 for a link. <laughs> yeah, yeah, just, just do that. Yeah, and then that's, that's better than broken link building. It's just white hats don't want to talk about that stuff because obviously it's paying for a link. Um, what do you guys think about ebook syndication for link building? I think um, generally ebooks, um, you know, sometimes I'll download a book first off these little ebook websites to check it out. <laughs> I know I shouldn't. If it's a good book, I'll get the hard copy. But yeah. realistically, those ebook syndication websites are really spammy. Yeah, and any kind of syndication. Yeah, any kind just, of syndication. Just, yeah, they'll shit. register a .info domain for like 50 cents or so. Yeah. They'll get hundreds of them. Then they'll decide they want to release a syndication platform. Yeah. It's like all those Fiverr press releases, that info exactly submission. Opinion, right? Stay yeah. away from all of that type of job. And in, in my opinion, with syndica syndication links, only work for like really local or really low competition stuff. And it, like that's why you never see people who are successful with IFTTT SEO, like talking about how they ranked a hundred thousand a month uh, monthly yeah. search keyword because you can't rank it with IFTTT mm -hmm. SEO because it's all syndicate, it's all duplicate, yeah. it's all duplicated content, duplicate like, content syndicated and stuff that people don't actually even do on the internet. Yeah, exactly. You don't see some little business saying again, right? I'm just going to randomly create all these web two and interlink them <laughs> to each other. Yeah, and, and again, spamming domain them. authority stacking, complete load of bullshit. Yeah, but it's like it's it's not real because who who naturally link, interlinks all of their backlinks together? Yeah, and then I saw someone talking about interlinking their PBNs together the other day, and I was like, do it, not it, that's interlink. Me. Yeah, and do then not there's people out there that will actually pay money to get these services yeah. built out. <laughs> when for that same amount of money, they could go to like Todd or Diggity, get some really relevant PBN links, and get crazy boosts. Yeah, it's literally it's just insane. Like you're literally just putting crazy risk on your website doing these auto-generated <laughs> spammy looking techniques it's ridiculous. for very little, if any, SEO gain yeah. with money that you can just be put into PBNs. 100% or outreach so links. Um, I'll click quickly answer this one. Do you think the UK Google algo is up to date like G.com is? It's the uh, UK and Google US are literally the exact same algorithm. I see like maybe like a couple hours of delay between when Penguin updates and Panda updates and things get rolled out, but uh, I think it's the exact same kind of platform it's running. It's only countries that are different languages generally to English yeah. that are running other kind of services. I know, like for example, Google Japan, um, they had a webmaster team that their biggest achievement from like a whole two years of work was hitting seven people's PBN networks, <laughs> and I was like, seven people's PBN networks across yeah. a whole country's SEO. That was just insane. Those big networks. <laughs> yeah, that, but I don't think it, that's what I mean. I don't. Think, well, I think it's just they don't have the kind of teams. That so interestingly, team from with. from what you said about um, how often it refreshes, what would what would the type of timeline be? You know, as a rough guesstimate of when these algos are refreshing. You know, if someone was to go out there and take one of our SAP techniques, for example, mm -hmm. and blast it on their website, how long would that kind of stuff last? I think it depends is language it, it, to it, language. Is it weekly like Google claimed? No. To, to, from, my, from my experience, I don't think it's weekly at all. I, I'm seeing fluctuations almost once a month yeah. that could indicate something alg changing in algo. Yeah. I think now, especially at the moment, Google yeah. are trying to make it they're trying more so many more. different things. Yeah, because like li literally, there've been updates every month for like the last few months. Now. Yeah, and I think they are trying to make it so that it's just consistent fluctuation. They don't necessarily need to make that fluctuation affecting people. They just need to put enough fear into people's heads that there's that there's this massive swings all over the place to for them to either leave SEO or stop trying to use certain tactics. Yeah. Um. Generally, all this kind of stuff is literally just propaganda so it's like trying to make you fear yes. their algorithm rather than making their algorithm better and it's interesting with what's happening with the repurposing sandbox of registering expired domains and having to wait like 35 days to link out google and then putting that fear into people so they'd stop using the spy domains mm -hmm. when free to register expired domains still give you seo benefit it's just they've put something there to try and warn seos from doing that particular tactic yeah Definitely. So Google are aware that we are doing SEO and they're trying <laughs> yeah. to combat these specific tactics, but they do work. It's just knowing you know how to work around it, and that's why being part of such a big community helps because we're all sharing data. Yeah, exactly. So it's um, we can all correlate data between everyone. Yeah. Um, 
There's another one quickly that what is are there any must have SEO tools? I think the only one in the market really at the moment is Ahrefs. Yeah, yeah, that's you know, that can, just for me, everyone that could that just wipes out Semrush as yeah, well. Yeah, you know, I love yeah. Semrush, all of my like, best pieces of content I ever produced mm -hmm. were always around Semrush, always had raised reviews and stuff. But what Ahrefs does now, much bigger database, yeah. drills in deeper, and their clickstream data and their keyword research tool yeah. is just amazing. Um, I will say that I do kind of do comparison. I still have SEMrush and I still have Ahrefs. Yeah, I think it's nice to export from both yeah. and make it into one centralized and, and you database. Get, and for the cheaper plans on SEMrush, you get more data than you do on the Ahrefs plans. Yeah. So it, it does, because on Ahrefs, you have to have the $400 a month one to see the number 51 to 100 positions. Yeah. Whereas you get the full positions for the $99 a month one on SEMrush. Yeah. So if you're trying to save money just to get kind of ranking data and competitors and do keyword research and stuff, so much is probably a lot cheaper. I, I have used group buys and things, but I'm a little bit wary of what data I input into yeah, group buys. Yeah, because other people can see. Because I noticed in. that a lot of people in group buys, they start putting on their clients' websites and money websites, and they don't think they realize that everybody else in this group buy can see all their clients' websites. Yeah, a little bit. It baffles me. I'll go on there to look <laughs> at data, but I won't start putting all my clients' websites yeah. and stuff Some, on I, I've known someone who literally steals niches from group buys. Yeah. Like, he just goes on group buy accounts and like yeah. looks up all the sites in their history yeah. and steals all of the sites that you're using yeah, like you guys are like using group buys. Mm -hmm. well, everything you do is logged, and you can just go back in your account and it bookmarks what you did, so you can then just click and rerun that specific report. And obviously, yeah. people don't realize that we can just look at all your niches and things. So be careful. Yeah. And then, I'd, like, I buy my full Majestic package because I really do like the trust flow metric. I know yeah. everyone's gone completely off trust flow. I saw your trust flow, too. but Sorry, purely so. for outreach and. Um, Doing really big lists of uh, of websites, getting the stats. I've re I really think Majestic gives a more accurate, yeah, with a TF. And I think CF. DR though. To be fair, DR domain rank by AHF has improved yeah. so fucking much at the moment. But I will say, I don't just hate on DA. I don't just hate on TF. I hate on all metrics. Yeah, all, <laughs> all metrics, metrics. Yeah, yeah, all metrics all bullshit, yeah. yeah. yeah they, don't, they don't work. The only metrics that work are the metrics in the bank account. Um, yeah, literally yeah. <laughs> your cash <account's> flow. <laughs> um, microsite versus authority site. I think. For, well, he says Microsoft versus authority site for beginners. I think authority site all day yeah, long just yeah. because niche M sites. Are, yeah. For me, it was always at the very start. It was always Microsoft's little niche sites. As soon as I got your course, opened my eyes to actually yeah. making proper websites that target far more keywords and generate mm -hmm. way more money, less effort as well. Yeah. And with Similar some of the some well. of the techniques some of them that you well. use as well improve the SEO so much. You're actually using the same kind of links, yeah, the same yeah, link yeah, exactly. volume, as the but you're just sites. making really nice websites. Yeah, so that's yeah. So you make your well, essentially all I'm teaching you is make your on page and your website white hat, make your off page black hat. But obviously, it's not it's, it's black hat that's not going to get you hit. So you're not spamming your site. Yeah, you're just using legitimate black hat. And then obviously there is a blend between the two where. Mm -hmm. An authority site would be this uh, big authority sites, which would cover whole category. But then there's mini authority sites, which would just do a specific pro a specific product. But in that specific product, there's lots of different ones. Yeah. So rather than just doing it about computer parts, you would only do it about monitors. But you'd go across so many different monitors to the point where you're going on TVs and things. <laughs> um, so that could be like a a way to meet in the middle. So rather than just being a niche site. About something specific, really specific, like 144 hertz monitors, which is an actual <laughs> website where someone yeah, made it. Know, yeah. You know that yeah, website. Yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> They've made this website to be a micro niche site. Yeah, and for thought, it, hang on a sec. Yeah, it's hang on a sec. Yeah. Let's just click all these pages. And now they've got all these random different pages. But all different monitors. When it's like really. one. Yeah. And and it, that, that site gets like a quarter of a million. Yeah. Hopefully, and that, yeah. Okay, this is something crazy. Um, so he should have just started off as an authority site because now he's trying to put an authority website yeah. and it looks a bit weird when his website's about one about specific one, yeah, product. Exactly. That, yeah, that's literally all, all day long. Don't go. That's why I don't like EMDs or PMDs because as soon as you try to expand beyond it, it just kind of puts off users from clicking onto a website because it says about the specific thing. And if you get that website, even if you get that website, it's $10,000 a month. You're going to find it very difficult to get an EMD to a hundred thousand dollars a month because yeah. you don't have the you don't have the brand ability. Yeah, there's a ceiling and, as well on the yeah, exactly. traffic. You can, yeah, yeah. And, and and when you actually um, exactly whereas if you just have a brand name, yeah, brand number name. one, there's no ceiling, yeah. and number two, when you come to sell the website, it's worth a hell of a lot more than it is than an EMD or a PMD. Yeah, there's someone that's going to buy that website. They've got room to expand. They can exactly. go out there and spend a hundred grand on content. If it's really yeah. general, all of a sudden they've like tripled revenue. Exactly. <laughs> He's already got the previous issue yeah. authority. Yeah. So you are kind of limiting yourself. Mm -hmm. But if you just wanted to get stuck in, you can meet in the middle and do like a mini authority site. 
Yeah, um, 100%. So if it was a website about hunting, for example, you could do specific hunting weapons and then just do like different crossbows and hunting knives and that type of thing on yeah. that website rather than just doing it about the whole thing to do with hunting or the outdoors. Exactly. Um, um, Simon Trash, a quick question. Uh, uh, Charles, have you also had bad experiences with repurposing or auction domains for money sites? Um, I have not had bad experiences. Basically, it's just called a repurposing sandbox video again on my channel about it, which I did last week. Um, it's just purely a pain in the ass to wait two, three months. But when you do wait those two, three months, you suddenly see all of your money pages, page two, page one, page three, page four. Um, so it is worth the wait. And also the age gives you more ability to have a higher link velocity. Yeah. You do just have to wait that initial two and, months. And for so. people that are looking for auction domains, what would be the go-to places um, or tools that you'd recommend? Go to tools, I use Register Compass Register if I'm doing Compass. any kind of auction scraping. Yeah. Um, for actually going to places to find domains, I use TV Solutions. Yeah. Uh, Tom, who owns the service, did have a go at me for saying that people should go and buy their money site domains from there because it is a PBN domain selling service. But he sells for any domain that he has listed for over three hundred dollars. It's generally an age domain, and you can find awesome, awesome like niche niche oh, wow. sites on there for like like for example. Must TV one, Solutions. Yeah, yeah. I bought one for example, literally like two days ago. That was eight years old. Eight years old, nine months. Had like do follow links from like Forbes and, and like all sorts of websites and stuff. It was completely brandable, um, and it was like three hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah. Or, no, sorry, six hundred and fifty dollars. But I get like a nice discount. And, and, and what? Um, and how's that doing now? Now that it was an expired domain. Uh, no, it, it wasn't expired. It's got the age, so it's, yeah. it's not. It's, it's never dropped. So, so it's so it's, so it's an auction domain. Yeah. He, someone he bought has, it auction. Yeah. And then bought, he, he resells them. And, and you've used but, now use it as a mini site. Yeah. Now using money site. But obviously, I've got to now wait the initial yeah. month or two months to get the rebranded thing, even yeah. though it's a very very similar. Niche. And there is there is one thing that um, I know Yashir had shared, which was to get um, an auction domain, and rebuild the domain exactly how it was an archive, all the content, mm -hmm. all the pages. And then let it re rank for its old phrases and then add all your new money pages onto it. Yeah. And he says that's a way to bypass that. Yeah. I'm not sure. It, well, it, I haven't tested that. Yeah, so I haven't no tested comment that. On that one. Yeah. Um, and there was but, no data behind it, but he did yeah. say that by doing that. Um, so just rebuilding the old site. Yeah, rebuilding the old site. The money you, pages like you do yeah. Anyway. And then obviously, if there's SEMRISH history mm -hmm. or um, Majestic history, you can see what kind of phrases it are targeting. Yeah. Um, it's brand phrase. Once it starts ranking number one for its brand and everything, start rebuilding all your money pages and mm -hmm. see if those money pages rank. And there's a good chance doing it like that, you won't have to wait that two, three months. Um, easy. It's almost like tricking Google and then doing a bait and switch once Google trusts you yeah. and start <laughs> building off all your money pages. Mm -hmm. um, we have got a ton of questions, but we've only got about eight minutes left. Um, so we'll just kind of go through some. Besides citations, do you recommend any kind of specific type of foundational links? Um, I literally just just citations because I'm so fixated really? on using my outreach links. <laughs> um, being pretty much seventy five percent of my link profile, and then PBN is being twenty five. Mm -hmm. I'll hit one hundred and fifty citations. And the only other type of filler links realistically would be stuff like manual blog comments on really high traffic pages in my industry that are branded. Mm -hmm. And I'd probably do 20 or 30 of those. Um, but in terms of things you spoke about earlier, about Q&A, forums, that's something I really would like to get into, um, especially with the correlations I've heard from having a link from a page that ranks for specific phrases in your industry is a really good trust signal. So if you're searching for these specific questions, and they rank for that phrase, and you get a link off that page, that's a, a good plus signal to your website that you're around the neighborhood of traffic generating yeah, yeah, traffic um, website. and Google search traffic generating yeah. websites. Mm -hmm. So that's something definitely, um, I, and I know if you were to put something well, together, I'd be all over that. Yeah. I'd run different <laughs> foundation links purely because stuff like Web 2.0, social bookmarks are also played out. Yeah, and it's just a massive um, signal to Google IOBL. saying, hey, look, I'm doing SEO. Yeah. As soon as my website goes live, I get all these social bookmarks, IFTT network, <laughs> domain authority stack Link in, wheels. And, and all these link wheels link and press pyramid. releases yeah, from, press release. from day one. Please stop using press releases as they are currently used. Um, if you're using press releases, just do it one by one. So if you're, if you're in the finance niche, put it on your own finance. That kind of thing, just do it one by one because you're duplicating and syndicating yeah. this this press release. There's a few platforms. A thousand websites. There's ridiculous. a few platforms what I won't name, but yeah. if you've had a press release, 
check the actual websites they're syndicated on because people have been using them as parasites yeah, yeah and yeah. they've been spammed to death yeah, to literally PR millions web, it's of just links being dropped and hit over yeah so again. like why would you want to get a, a link on a website that's been spammed to death it's no follow link anyway duplicate content a thousand times mm -hmm. unless you're actually wanting to, to and there's a good chance you're going to get press the seo benefit isn't there that hundred dollars we better spend on some high quality outreach links and pbn links um but definitely, I really think something to put together, some foundational link um, outreach for, for cheap links or manual links you can build, would, something like that to put together would be really helpful. Yeah, well, Even for me, that would help dramatically. I just, I just, because I've, really, cause I've just went away from IFTT, Web 2.0, yeah. all of that stuff. So I, for foundational links, citations, only if it's obviously like local sites or something. For affiliate sites, yeah. most of my affiliate sites are I still, I, I still do... A, the thing I, is, I hate it though because it like kind of tells Google that you're trying to rank just in the US or just in the UK or something like that. Yeah, but, but, but what I feel is if it, it gives you a, a, a real business presence, mm -hmm. all the other affiliate websites don't have a, a real local presence. Yeah. And I've gone as far as tried to create a Google business page for, the, for my affiliate site. So these are real offices. Obviously, I'm not going to verify them, but these are yeah. real physical offices with 150 sources in the US say that this is a real office. And I really don't think that that no follow link is enough to tell Google not to rank you in other countries. All it does is give you really good. Well, I'm, I'm actually I have done I have done tests. Yeah, and it doesn't say it's not to rank you in other countries. Yeah, it just devalues your potential in those other countries. So like, yeah. why can we rank you number one in Google US, but are we ranking number yeah. four or number five that or something would, in UK? Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, that would definitely make sense yeah. in the sense that. That's how Google would differentiate local searches to mm -hmm. um, informational searches by seeing it. Does this website have like um, citation references or a yeah. physical location? Don't rank for these informational searches. That could be something I've yeah. seen it myself, and I'm using citations. I do, I do use directories, so yeah. like best of the web, Joanne yeah. Blackner, just stuff like that, and then like comments and yeah. and social profiles, obviously for foundational links like Twitter, Facebook, yeah. Google. And I know Quora, is it Quora? Cora, 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 Cora. Yeah. I know that's a big one going on there, and just just ask like twenty yeah, yeah, questions, yeah. And, and then just keep them, just keep account. replying to links to your website. Yeah, yeah, Q and A links are really good. Yeah, Q and A links are actually really good foundational links and pillar links from money pages as well. Yeah. So I use like ten to twenty Q and A. And obviously find your forums in your industry. Yeah. Um, yeah and, and, but obviously yeah. I'd recommend it's like, it's, forum link building is getting harder and harder. Though, yeah. You need to have age and. Already posts and a lot of forums have restrictions on posting links and stuff. So yeah, and for don't use forum profiles. That's yeah. yeah. Um, I remember forum profile links back in the day. <laughs> what was that website with that links you go on and just buy thousands of automated links? Well, every website back in the day. And that was on kind of SEO. I yeah. actually bought a really big package from really? it back in the day. Yeah. Uh, backlinks. Link, link Emperor. Oh, Link Emperor. Link Emperor. Yeah. Oh, link Emperor was, it was such yeah. such a good website. Yeah, so many really, cool yeah, things. So remember. easy to buy. <laughs> so easy to nuke your website. I used to spend hundreds. With all your little like, sliders and stuff. Yeah, I used to buy like hundreds of packages like every couple months. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I think that is unfortunately we're gonna have to wrap yeah. it up here. We've been on for like nearly an hour and fifty minutes. So yeah, unfortunately I have to go to Amsterdam now. <laughs> unfortunately, um, yeah, enjoy enjoy the local delicacies, <laughs> and enjoy the local fruits of their labour yeah. of the Dutch people. Um, no, but we will probably, in fact, we'll just do one next week or something. Let's, yeah, we'll do yeah. one next week. So I mean, I'm I do have to fly again next week, unfortunately. Yeah, again somewhere. Um, but yeah, we will. We, we, we'll do some next week. Yeah, we can well. get on a hangout. I could be from yeah. here. We can have loads mm -hmm. of people hop on if they want to. Yeah, yeah. We can um, or well, well, if people yeah. prefer just you know two people or three people, four people. Yeah, drop drop in the comments of this video, not in the live chat because there's like the live chat's just like. Brrr. But if, if you drop in the comments of this video, once this video is published, what you'd like to see in the next kind of video, or, or maybe who who you'd like to see as well yeah. kind of in the next video, or the and format, if or if you like this format. If there's anything that you guys like, for example, the infographic uh, submission technique, mm -hmm. if you guys want me to expand on videos and anything in this video, um, just put that in the comments, and I'll go ahead and get videos created for Yeah, that. so just message James on Facebook, um, like a thousand messages of everything you want him to do for you. Um, <laughs> yeah, you know, we'll get... Proper PBM group rocking, yeah, crazy content. If crazy you're not, live if you're not in the group, the PBM dot community, straight in there, join the community, and you'll be able to see kind of a lot more information there. Yeah, but yeah, uh, thanks for having, thanks for being on the show, yeah, James. Thank you. It was good. Thank you for hopefully coming this, over. Yeah, yeah, yeah. getting you on the <laughs> on the couch. casting couch. <laughs> Hopefully, hopefully this will be like a more regular series. This yeah. is the first broadcast I've ever done on YouTube, so yeah. uh, hopefully it'll be pretty good. 
Fantastic. So thanks everyone for coming. I'll yeah. hopefully see you in the next episode. Yeah. And thanks, James, for yeah. no, being on the channel pleasure. as well. Re really enjoyed it. Yeah, yeah. I learned a ton well. from you. Uh, <laughs> just well, I learned a ton from you as well. Yeah. Um, yeah, so we'll see you in the next episode. Have an awesome day. Peace. Peace, guys.